grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Will you bow your heads and pray with me? Heavenly Father, grant to me your Holy Spirit that my words would be your words. Grant to your people your Holy Spirit that they would hear your words and be edified by them. In Jesus' name, amen. Then Jesus told his disciples, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me, Jesus says. Give up your life, suffer with me, die with me. That's the message that Peter gives, that Jesus gives to his disciples today, but it's one that Peter just can't seem to wrap his mind around. He can't fathom that Jesus is going to die. I've said this before, but remember that in Jesus' day, in the day of, of the disciples and Jesus walking on earth, that the Jewish people thought that the Messiah would be a political figure, that he would free them from the Roman oppression, that he would set up a kingdom on earth in the promised land for the people of God. So when Jesus teaches that he's got to suffer and that he's got to die, Peter can't wrap his mind around this. He thought that God wanted something for his people that God actually didn't want for his people. He misunderstood the things that God wanted. So when Jesus talks to him about going to the cross, about suffering and dying, Peter actually rebukes Jesus. Far be it from you, Lord, this shall never happen to you. This rebuke comes on the heels, if you'll remember last week's gospel reading, of Peter giving his wonderful confession of who Jesus is. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. So maybe Peter's feeling a little puffed up. He just received this, this praise from Jesus. That you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. Jesus just gave Peter an attaboy, and no, so now Peter thinks that he can tell Jesus, no, you're not going to do this. Peter misunderstood the things that the Messiah was here to do. Last week we have Peter's wonderful confession, and it's this week, this reading, where Jesus begins to teach exactly what it is the Messiah is supposed to do, to suffer, to die, and on the third day, praise be to God, to rise again. This is where Jesus begins to teach his disciples that what they think they know, they don't actually know. This is where Jesus begins to teach his disciples that he's not a tool for their earthly ambitions. He's not a tool for them to use in their political agendas or, or their personal agendas, their social agendas, whatever agendas they may have, the things of man that they have their minds set on, Jesus didn't come for that. Peter had his mind set on this earthly realm, this kingdom that he thought was supposed to be set up. This is why Jesus tells him that he has his, thing, his mind set on the things of man, set on the things of the here and now, of the today. That's not what Jesus has his mind set on. Jesus had his mind set on the things of God, suffering, sacrifice. So he tells Peter to be willing to, de to deny himself and to be willing to take up his cross in order to follow him. Deny what you think you know God wants for you and listen to what I actually want for you. Listen to what he actually wants for you. Peter had his mind set on the things of man. Today, we, we suffer from the same, that same sort of dilemma that Peter found himself in. Not quite in the same way as Peter, of course. We don't think that Jesus has come to set up an earthly kingdom. We do know that Jesus will come back and set up a kingdom on earth, but that'll be the eternal kingdom of Christ. Right? So we don't think the exact same things that Peter thinks, but we do have the same sort of thought process that Peter has. We have our mindset on the things of man. And it got me to wondering, this little passage uh, got me to wondering, what exactly are those things that we set our mind on, the things of man that we set our mind on, that we set our thoughts on? We don't even realize that they might be things of man. 
Maybe it's the message of the world that we tend to take in and make the message of Christianity. What are some of those things? When I started thinking about this, one thing really popped out at me. There are probably several. You could probably make a very long list, but one thing really popped out at me today. There was one thing that I could think about that has destroyed countless lives, broken up innumerable homes, and caused divorce untold. And that is the message of happiness. The message of happiness. Wanting to be happy. Chasing after happiness. And then if you're not happy, well, there's something wrong with you. You need to make a change. You need to do something different. Maybe you even need to change who you are. A lot of the problems in this world today, when you sit down and really look at them, seem to be coming from the chasing of happiness. I mean, the transgender agenda, the homosexual agenda, all of that stuff is wrapped up in this desire to be happy. And it's easy to point at that, but I wanted to focus on something that really affects the church today, something where we take in this message of the world of wanting to be happy and then chasing after that happiness. But, but pastor, doesn't God want me to be happy? Doesn't Jesus want me to be happy? Well, let's listen to his words one more time. Deny yourself, take up your cross. Deny yourself, take up your cross. Be willing to suffer and die. That's what Jesus said. Our happiness is not at the top of Jesus's, it's not at the top of God's list of priorities. That's not why Jesus came, to make us happy. Jesus went to the cross, suffered and died, and he said that his servants will suffer the same thing. The servant is not above the master. As they do to the Son of Man, so they will do to you. But this problem of happiness has worked its way into the church, the people of God. And the problem is when you chase after happiness, it's like chasing after a drug. Once you think you found it, you're happy. But it's only for a brief period of time. And then you start looking for more happiness. You need to be happy again. And if you're not happy, well, like I said, there's something wrong with you. You've got to make a change in your life. And where I see this really kind of affecting us in the church is in family and marriage. If I'm not happy in my marriage, well, then maybe I should go outside of my marriage to find that happiness. Maybe I should find somebody else that will make me happy. Or maybe I should just separate myself from my wife, from my husband, from my family. And then maybe then, maybe then I'll be happy. The preachers of this world will tell you that happiness is the key to who you are. That happiness, you finding happiness is you being you. But in Christ we see things differently. In Christ, we see that it's suffering, that it's sacrifice who makes us who we are. Suffering and sacrifice is the key to who Christ is. Suffering and sacrifice. Suffering is sacrifice. Sacrifice is suffering. We Christians see things differently because we know that sacrifice and suffering is exactly what Jesus has called us to do. Deny yourself, take up your cross. Take up the instrument of suffering. Take up the instrument of death. Suffer. We have a hard time wrapping our heads around that, just like Peter had a hard time wrapping his head around what Jesus was saying. When Peter tried to rebuke Jesus and say, no, Lord, you're not going to the cross, Jesus told him, get behind me, Satan. He called Peter Satan, because Peter had his mind set on the things of man. The things of the world, not the things of God. We do the same thing all too often. The world tells us that our happiness is important, and so instead of chasing after the cross, we chase after happiness. Instead of chasing after sacrifice and suffering and love for the neighbor... We chase after love for ourselves. 
But in Christ, we're able to see the good that suffering and sacrifice can bring. It's through his suffering, it's through his death, it's through his sacrifice that he took away the sins of the world. It's through his suffering that the greatest gift for mankind was worked. It's through his suffering that you have all been made a part of Christ. It's through his suffering and death that now you are invited to join him. Deny yourself. Take up your cross. Join me in my suffering. Join me in my death. The text says that from that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. Jesus began to show his disciples that what they thought was true, what they thought were the things of God, weren't actually the things of God. Jesus sought the suffering. Jesus sought the sacrifice, not for his own good, but for the good of Peter, whom he had just called Satan. For the good of his other disciples, for the good of the world, Jesus sought the suffering for your good. Set your, th- set your mind on the things of God and not the things of man. The things of God and the things of man are directly clashing with each other. Jesus had his mind set on eternity, has his mind set on eternity, sacrifice and love for you. And now you are called to deny yourself and to set your mind on those same things. Sacrifice, suffering, love for your neighbor. Take up your cross, join him in the suffering, join him in the sacrifice because whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever denies himself or herself for the sake of Christ will find true life. Suffering is hard. Suffering is difficult. This life is hard and difficult. Nobody's denying that. Even Jesus tells us that. If it was easy, it wouldn't be called suffering. Take up your cross. Deny yourself. Follow Jesus. If you are in a place where your marriage is struggling, you have been given a wonderful opportunity to take up your cross, to shoulder that cross with your spouse, to deny yourselves together. Because when you suffer for the sake of Christ, when you suffer for the sake of your spouse, you are suffering for the sake of Christ. Seek out marriage counseling. Come see me. Come see Pastor Tyner. Let us help. Let us bear the cross with you. Do not separate what God has joined together. If you and your spouse are willing to take up your crosses together, if you are willing to suffer together, you will be stronger for it, and a strange thing happens. God will give you joy. Joy in the life to come and joy in this life as well. When you set your mind, when you focus your mind on the things of God, putting the things first that he has given you to put first, your wife, your family, your neighbor, everything that he has put in your life, when you focus on those things and then put the cross right in the middle so that as you focus on those things, you're also focused on that cross. When you do these things, when you focus on Christ, You receive joy, lasting happiness, happiness that only Jesus can give to you. Deny yourself, for whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Deny your happiness. Take up your cross. Take up your suffering. Join Jesus. Suffer with him. Die with him. Set your mind on the things of God. Deny yourselves. Be willing to suffer for others. Deny your happiness. Find joy in Christ Jesus. In his name, amen.